Continuing on with our material, I want to build this up one component at a time. So the first thing we're going to work on is the diffuse color. So let's go back into the content browser. And I'm going to double click on our new material to pick up where we left off. Now what I'd like to be able to do is to have some influence over the color of these bricks. This kind of generic sandstone texture we have is pretty cool. But being able to change that color is also kind of nice. So let's set up a network that would allow us to do that. Now what I'm going to do for starters is create a vector parameter. So I'm going to right click, come under parameters, and choose a vector parameter. Now the purpose of this node is to store some color information within a named parameter that could be later adjusted through a material instance constant. This means that we could create a copy or an instance of this material that had an entirely different coloration for the bricks. The other cool thing about doing this is that it leaves us able to change the color of the bricks during runtime if we want to, if we applied this to a material instance, using, say, Kismet or Matinee. So what I'm going to do is select our new parameter. Let's come under parameter name and set this to brick color. And we need to give it a default value. So I'm just going to click on the magnifying glass here next to the default value property. And let's just choose some cool and kind of desaturated dark red. And click OK. Now, I need to combine this with my initial texture information. I'm going to do that with a multiply node. Just multiply the results of the pixels together. Now, this multiplication will work independently for each channel. That means the red channels will get multiplied together, the blue channels and the green channels, all will get multiplied independently of one another. So we can create one of these by right clicking and we can go down under math and choose multiply if you like. Or the shortcut is to hold down the M key, M for multiply, and there you go. Now let's just do a quick connection here. So we'll plug A into the RGB output of our brick color and the texture sample We'll plug into B, and we'll just take the result and plug it into Fuse. And there you go. We now have red bricks. But, you know, not to be picky, they're a little too red. They're almost completely red, like there's no other color information there. Almost none, anyway. And that's not so hot. So what I'd like to do is bring back a little bit of the influence of our bricks. And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to hold down Control and select Multiply, Texture Sample, and our parameter. Slide these back a little bit. And now I want to bring in a linear interpolation node. Now I'm going to do this by holding down the L key and left clicking. Now a linear interpolator, or just a LERP for short, is going to take in two colors or two values really. And it's going to blend between them based on the information of an alpha channel. Such that a white pixel will receive a value of A and a black pixel will receive a value of B. And there's a blend in between the two. So let's take our multiply and plug this into input A. We're going to take our texture sample and plug this into input B. So we're actually blending between our new completely red brick and our original kind of yellowish sandstone brick, but now we need an alpha channel. Let's grab the alpha channel from our bricks just for starters. And if you need to know what this looks like, you can plug it into diffuse temporarily. And that's what it looks like. And now we can take the output of this and plug this into diffuse. And now we have kind of the sandstone coloration starting to come back in with that red color around the edges. Now here's the cool part. We can come back to our brick color, grab its color value, and maybe just at random change this to a shade of blue. Click OK, and now we have blue bricks. Very quick and easy adjustment. Now I'm going to set that back to a nice dark desaturated red. And really that's everything that I want to do just for the diffuse network. So let's take a look at how we can set this aside because already we're starting to get a lot of nodes starting to pile up and this isn't even scratching the surface. You can create uh, material networks with just many, many, many nodes that you have to zoom way out to see them all. But let's start early in keeping things nice and organized. What I'm gonna do is hold down Control and Alt and drag a marquee selection box around all of these nodes then right click out here in empty space and choose new comment. And let's put for the comment, let's put in diffuse and click OK and check it out. We get this nice box which surrounds all of our nodes, or it surrounds most of them. We could grab the little black triangle and control drag it to make it expand all the way out. Now check this out. If we select diffuse, 
uh, select this group, this actual box, we can hold down control, and if we drag the box around, it drags around all the nodes as well. So it's a real easy way to not only keep things organized, but to allow you to readjust the positioning of your nodes just to make things a little easier to read. So that's going to wrap things up for everything I wanted to show here. Let's go ahead and apply changes to the original material. And then we'll close out of the material editor. Be sure to save your package. So select your package and hit control S. And that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.